Our next caller is Michelle from Illinois. Hi, Michelle. How can we help you? Hi, guys. How's it going? Good. Um, I just want to thank you for um, answering my question today. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for everything that you do on the podcast and beyond. Um, it is the most informative um, content out there. So I just hats off to you guys and your hardworking team. Thank you. Um, as for my question, it's a bit of a two-parter. Me and my boyfriend, Ryan, got into canoeing last year um, because of COVID and are planning a trip to Maine for a five-day like camping trip um, down the actual um, Allagash River. And I want to know uh, what we can do from now until July um, to properly prepare for putting the canoe on our backs, walking at most like a mile, and um, like lugging camping equipment. Um, we're going to be paddling for about seven hours a day. Um, and I just want to know what to do from now until July to do that. And then also uh, how to best per, um, prime daily, um, like every morning to um, do all those things okay. without injury. Okay. This is cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Well, first of all, that sounds awesome. Sounds yeah, like a lot of fun. Sounds like a good time. Great question. Okay. So number one, when it comes to uh, sports specific type performance, and this is, I'll put that in this category because you have a very specific uh, request, right? You want to improve your performance or maximize your performance for something quite specific, okay? Nothing mm -hmm. will get you better results than practicing the actual thing you're trying to get better at. So I want to say that first because I'm going to give you some recommendations for workouts and stuff like that, but they should not replace canoeing and carrying your canoe and all the stuff that you're going to be doing when you go on this trip because that, those things will give you the okay. biggest right if you, have, if you have access to a lake or something nearby that would be the most yeah. ideal thing to make sure you every week are getting in there and you're rowing and you're right in your canoe. and carrying your canoe and you guys practice that you know on a weekly basis and that kind of stuff that that'll give you the best carryover now as far as workouts are concerned um, as far as the maps programs the map strong would probably be in my opinion one of the better programs because what you're looking for is overall strength, but you also want durability. This is, you know, you want endurance, but it's the kind of endurance that requires durability. It's not like a long distance yeah. run. run. It's we more, call it work capacity. Yeah, work capacity. So Map Strong would be a great program, but I would modify it if you're doing a lot of canoeing and a lot of uh, specific training. So you could cut the volume down in half or only do one foundational workout, one work session, you know, that kind of stuff. Then your question okay. about, and then your question about priming. Now, here's the thing about priming. Yes, you can prime for specific movements, but that pales in comparison to priming for your specific body, okay? So if Justin and I, for example, go do the same exact thing, we want to prime for rock climbing, that we could do rock climbing priming movements, and I'm sure it would involve something with the shoulders and probably something that has to do with the wrists and all that stuff, but really that's not going to be as effective as us assessing ourselves and then priming our bodies for what we specifically need. For example, I may have uh, worse shoulder mobility than Justin, or maybe he has hip mobility issues. So he's going to focus on those things, and I'm going to focus on those other things. So do you have access to MAPS Prime Pro? Uh, no, not at the moment. Take the webinar first. Yeah, so, so well, so I we have I actually did that, the one with Justin. Yeah. So that's one. Yeah, of, that's, I did that one. Excellent. So I would do MAPS Prime Pro. We'll make sure we send that to you. And in Maps Prime Pro, it goes through all the major joints of the body, go through the movements and see which areas you lack, uh, you lack the most. Pick three or four movements that you need the most help in, and then do those on a regular basis. There's some, I mean, there's definitely some exercise stuff though that I, I would add yeah. into your team because you're uh, obviously I doubt you have access to a lake every single day, or that would probably be really tough to get there. But there's obviously there's some movements that are similar to rowing and I, you probably can get access to a, a rower. I think a rower would be a, a great piece of equipment and whatever the duration is that you would end up probably canoeing for, I would mm -hmm. be doing a row, a, a row for. I also know how you carry a canoe is really similar to how you do like a front loaded kettlebell walk. Yes. So, and okay. I know Justin loves those overhead carries. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that, and this would go perfectly with Sal's recommendation for strong on those days of building up your work capacity with heavy farmer walks and also like overhead carries. So you would you would hold these in position and really learn how to you know depress your shoulder blades down and really like pack your shoulders so you have nice stability there with an overhead position uh, and just build up that endurance while carrying something overhead is would be massively beneficial. Yeah. And then lastly, I would say. Do some good windmills. That's going to really work on that that stability of the shoulder, but also that rotational stability and strength that you're going to need. I mean, carrying 
an awkward uh, you know, object overhead. You're not walking on flat surface. You're going to be climbing over things and whatnot. And if you're really strong with carrying things overhead, but you lack rotational stability, mm -hmm. that can sometimes cause problems. Windmills are great for addressing that. Do we have the landmine stuff in strong like we do performance or no? Do you know, Justin? Uh, not in strong, but uh, yeah, the performance. Because I think that would be a great exercise for someone like that too. That There's that rotation. Landmine rotational yes, stuff. Yes, the yeah. landmine. And so, that's, so strong, I think, would be a great foundation like Sal said. I think for the most part, I would follow that programming, but I would probably eliminate some movements that I, I can tell aren't really a huge carryover to canoeing yeah. and probably add in some things that might not be in there like the landmine rotations or windmills things like that those are mm -hmm. movements and then a, a lot of the overhead carry stuff that sal or, i mean justin's talking about and then including rowing you know start rowing every other day uh if you can get a hold of a rower and and, and include that into your routine now michelle how many days a week are you able to consistently dedicate to working out to get ready for this uh, I already work out about three days a week. Um, I go to like, I go to Planet Fitness. It's the only thing open by me right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I can dedicate five at this point. Okay. Okay. So avoid the free pizza there. That's a trap. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay. So. I was going to say that doesn't oh, that's help. not a thing anymore? Well, probably because of COVID. COVID. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh. You don't want to get the, you don't want to. Damn, what are they doing instead now? Huh? Uh, so many nothing. memberships. Free, just free lost face masks, maybe? Di digital pizza. <laughs> digital pizza. <laughs> Email you a slide. All right. So here, so here's what I'll say. Okay. So. You said you work out three. You said you can work out five. Let's go in the middle. Let's say four. Okay. Okay. Four days a week. Here's what I would. Here's a general routine that I would set you up with. Three days a week should be should be specific to what you're going to be experiencing on this trip. So I would for an hour I would practice and and treat treat them like exercises. Carrying the canoe, uh, hiking. I would actually go and canoe somewhere or use a rower, like Adam said. So that's three days a week. One day a week is resistance training, and you're going to focus on exercises that strengthen the body and complement the things you're looking for. And then every day, I would do priming, about you know two, maybe two 10-minute sessions, one in the morning and one at night, something like that, where you're focusing on the areas that you need to focus on. Generally speaking, that'll probably give you the best bang for your buck. Awesome. I like that. Awesome guys. Well, I think thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate nope. all of you, all, all that you guys, what you guys do. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, this. Have fun with that. I hope you have a great time. Oh yeah. Thanks, guys. No problem. Yeah, one of the biggest uh, mistakes I made as an young trainer was taking athletes uh, and training and thinking that that the gym or and stuff I could do with exercises. You just mimic all the movements. Yeah, and yeah. it was better than working out on the field. I yeah. mean, the reality is. If you want to get better at a sport or a particular skill, wasn't that practice you just get that. overall stronger and you know more endurance? Yes, wasn't that a common mistake that happened when MMA started getting really popular because it, it was so diverse and CrossFit was so diverse? They were having like a lot of like coaches were just like having these guys just do CrossFit routines for their training for MMA. Yeah, yeah. that was a mistake. A lot of people and a lot of people make this. People who like to work out who then you know sign up for a new sport i did this with jujitsu when i first did jujitsu i thought okay oh, yeah. uh, i want to get better at jujitsu my, my endurance so i'm going to do these kind of workouts nothing was better well, than just doing more jujitsu there's certain things though that there's like attributes so i guess that i guess that's a, a better way to ask like when you have like a thing like this like a sport nothing is going to be better than the sport itself but then there if there's specific attributes you know you want to improve for example like nothing's going to get me better at playing basketball than playing basketball but there are things in the gym that will make me jump higher mm -hmm. than sure. playing basketball and just jumping in basketball all the time. So there are certain attributes, like let's say like her her row strength yes. or her rotational strength, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There are certain things that like, okay, yeah, rowing will do a good job of it and help you and you'll definitely see some benefits. But there are some things in the gym that you can do that will give you better attributes for specific yes, sports. Yes, you want to view it like this. This is the way I like to look at it. Your Whatever your sport is, that is your diet. So when you're talking about nutrition, 90 something percent of all the results you can get from nutrition come from your food. Yeah. Then you have your supplements, which is like, you know, 5% maybe, right? The gym is the supplement to the main diet. The main diet is the sport that you're practicing, you're training. And then look at your gym workouts like supplements, like Adam's saying, how can I supplement stuff from the gym to help me in this particular area 
that I need a little bit of help and maybe it's more power yeah. or more speed or maybe my mobility needs a little bit more work. <clears throat> Use it like a supplement. If you do it like that, you'll get the best results. I'm a little bit jealous. I, I think I told you guys, like, I, so I did a week. It was called Boundary Waters. This was in uh, Minnesota and it was the same thing. We just portage. We'd carry these heavy uh, canoes over. We'd uh, fish out of the lakes. You could actually drink out of the lakes because oh, wow. they were so clean and, uh, and then we'd just pop up tents and everything, but I was like exhausted after that trip. So. Yeah, it sounds like a lot I of I think fun. the reason why this is a question that we I think we've got this almost every live qual like a sport specific mm -hmm. what do I do is because I think what we find is a lot of like, these aren't like she's not like a professional canoeer right you know what I'm saying and we've just talked we haven't talked to a professional NBA player it's people that love sports or they have this kind of sport like goal but then they also love the gym they love the gym and they want to be fit and so that's it's an it's an interesting uh place to meet where it's like okay well, what do I do here? Because I really care yeah. about the way I look 90% of the year, but I do have this trip coming up that I want to get ready for. So it's kind of like this push-pull. Totally.